The Mosterian Levalois blade is a remarkable piece of technology. It only takes a few minutes to make, but it's razor sharp. We found evidence of bitumen or natural tar, asphalt, and birch resin on some Levalois blades, so that we know that they were used for some sort of hafted tool. They weren't necessarily spear points. In this case, the resin serves as a handle. If Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens did haft the Levalois blade onto their thrusting spears, how did they go about doing that? Paleoanthropology is a very holistic discipline. We draw on many different fields to gain understanding of ancient people. Some of the oldest continuous cultures on Earth are found in Aboriginal Australia. The blades made by these cultures are nearly identical to those of the Mosterian, and it's from here we can start to gain insights into how they were made. Much of the time, archaeologists must painstakingly try to recreate the lifeways of our early ancestors. However, isolated groups of Aboriginal Australians deep in the western desert managed to maintain an independent existence, still using stone tools into the 1950s. The last of these groups finally made contact with civilization in the early 1980s. They've provided invaluable insights into how some of these tools were made, and we will use those techniques up ahead. The first step to create our spear will be to make the point. This large flake needs only a small amount of modification to turn it into a very deadly spear point. Now it's time to work on the shaft. Some groups in Aboriginal Australia used moga, a hardwood, for their spears. Even though their spears were thrown with spear throwers, they were quite different from the darts that were thrown with atlatls throughout much of the rest of the world. This is oak wood, very difficult to work with stone tools. Once the shape has been roughed out with a chopper, it's smoothed down by planing with a large flake. The shape of this shaft will be hypothetical, a transition shape between creating a notch and simply lashing a point onto a ready-made wooden thrusting spear. Here the tip is carefully tapered and rounded to allow for deeper penetration into the prey. We have a point in a shaft. Now, how to attach it? In Australia, the points were generally hafted onto the shafts with spinifex resin, which is derived from a grass, which is beaten into a wooden container and then heated with a hot rock. The pitch is then applied to the shaft and the stone point is pressed into it. Because there is evidence of Neanderthals using bitumen in the Middle East, that's what we'll be using today. To achieve the best adhesion, you want everything to be hot. The shaft, the rock, and the tar. In Australia, the point is sometimes simply pressed into the resin, with no reinforcement from sinew or cordage. When fiber reinforcement is used, it usually goes underneath the adhesive, creating a very strong, flexible fiberglass-like material. More tar is heated and applied to form a complete sleeve all the way around the shaft. That tar is hot. Sometimes it helps to lick your thumb and then press on it. So did the Neanderthals make spears like this? We don't know for sure, but with more experiments, maybe we'll find out if this design works.